How's it going everybody? Thank you for checking my channel and welcome to today's video. Today is going to be a part one of a two part series, much like I did back when I was playing on Pluggy. I'm going to be imbuing diadems to see if I could potentially get 220s. Now, how was I able to do this project when I just did this exact same thing maybe about a month or two ago? Because I had this particular video set up on the original SSD that came with my MacBook, switched over to my new one, and then when that one eventually was not working anymore, put my old SSD with all these character files still on it, transferred them over to Diablo 2 Resurrected, and here we are. For the time that it took to actually do this, it probably took about a couple hours each time I was able to play for about two weeks. And the strategy I did was players eight all the way to the Den of Evil and then player four the rest of the way to the Smith to be able to grab the hammer. That way I'd be at level eight pretty quickly to be able to get the imbue quest. And today I'm gonna to be doing 50 different diadem bases to be able to see if I can actually get a 220. And the mods you're gonna be looking for additionally are plus a strength, dexterity to be able to get to either a high one particular res or all res if you can potentially find it to be able to get faster hit recovery or just anything that's going to be beneficial to survivability that is something that you're going to be looking for with these particular roles i'm also going to discuss why you'd want to actually save your review quest for something like a diadem comparatively speaking to a circlet a coronet or a tiara but before we get into that let's go ahead and do a comment shout out and today's is going to be bull kathos from my farming high runes video saying that unfortunately when he came to farming Travico on players one with a Zerk Barb, after 500 runs, he was only able to find a goal rune. Unfortunately, that is how RNG can be sometimes. There are plenty of times where I have done LK runs and after about a thousand or 2000 runs, I maybe, maybe was able to find something like a Vex. And that's just something that you're gonna have to hang on to and keep going, be persistent. And eventually with enough determination, you'll be able to find the high runes that you desire. With all that said, let's get into the video. Not even death can save you from me. Greetings, mortals. I knew you would find your way back here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cover why you'd want to use your imbue quest or potentially reroll diadems for 220s. But first I want to make a quick disclaimer for anybody that's actually starting this entire game series on Diablo 2 Resurrected without actually playing vanilla Diablo 2 or something like Pluggy or Project Diablo 2 or any of the mods for the game. I'm going to go ahead and discuss item levels, which is important to understand when it comes to the imbuing and reroll process. However, in Diablo 2 Resurrected, we cannot see the item levels. Do not be afraid, do not worry about that. It is just simply something that is not displayed on screen, but it's still important to the understanding as to why these are such godly items to be able to continuously try to get to 20s when no other item in the game would allow you to do so. So again, just want to make a quick disclaimer, just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean that it's not there. Even if you can't see something, it doesn't mean it isn't there. But now let's go ahead and get into the information as to why you'd want to imbue and reroll them. When comparing headwear that can roll 220 for all characters, such as circlets, coronets, tiaras, and diadems, diadems are the only type that will have the chance to roll with the greatest mods regardless of its item level. It would still roll the same as an item level of 90 to potentially be a 220, because its magic level added with its quality level exceed the affix level needed for all mods to roll. This applies to both imbuing and rerolling, as when imbuing an item, the character level would matter as the item would become whatever your character level is plus 4, and in this case, the item level would be a 12 because my character being the lowest level required to be able to imbue would be 8, you add 4, and the item level would automatically turn to 12. And if you're not high enough of a level to get the best mods, it wouldn't roll to its greatest potential. However, the items would always be imbued as though the item level is 99. Now that we have a clear understanding as to what makes them so special, let's go ahead and check what I was able to imbue.
<laughs> I was able to get seven. 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 Seven, bro. And I'm not drunk down. That's absolutely unheard of. I mean, the last time I did this, I got three, and I was really lucky to get those three, but seven is just absolutely unheard of. Y'all had me scared of myself. Now let's go ahead and check out the highlights because I did get one of them that was a plain, just faster cast rate, but the rest of them are all 220s. So the first one is a 20 FCR, a little bit of mana leech, and eight all res. Nothing GG or anything to write home about. However, when it comes to having gear that you can actually use along the way to being able to get something more GG, this could be really beneficial for anybody that just needs to be able to hit a specific FCR breakpoint while they're trying to hunt for something like the Griffins or anything else that could be even better than this helm. The next one up is one of my favorites that I was able to get, which is a 220 for the Paladin with 36 to life and 28% cold res. Something that my Paladin struggles with is cold and fire res, so this would be really beneficial for him with the 36 to life being boostable by battle orders, something that I could actually see myself using in the future when it comes to switching him back to a hammered in. The next two are 220s for the Druid, with the first one having plus 26 to strength. This would be a really good item to use if it came with additional mods such as all res or mana and life leech, but unfortunately with it being just 26 to strength along with the two to all skills and 20 FCR, this is not something that I could see myself using. However, it is a stat that you wanna look for along with additional stats to make a diadem super GG. The second 220 for the Druid comes with 7% mana stolen per hit with 15% cold res. If you were to combine these two diadems together, this would be quite a great find to be able to get for your character with the 26 of strength being able to then get supplemented towards vitality to be able to make your druid even more of a tank with the additional cold res and 7% mana stolen per hit if it comes to using, for example, a wind druid. Unfortunately, neither of these diadems are gonna be useful for my druid as the stats that they have on them alone are nice, but unfortunately with nothing else rolling on them, they're not gonna be of any use. However, if they were again put together to make one really good diadem, that would be something that I would actually wanna use on my character. The last three 220s are all gonna be for the barb, with the first one having 97 to attack rating and 19 to dexterity, something that could be really beneficial for somebody that is trying to dual wield phase blades because you would have the 19 to dexterity to be able to help you get to the 136 attribute point to be able to hold them. Unfortunately, without any other mods to be able to roll on this diadem, it is not something that I can actually see myself using on my barbarian. The second one is going to be plus 15 to energy with nine to all res. Unfortunately, the all res roll was quite low, and if it was something like strength instead of energy, that could be something that I could maybe see myself using. Unfortunately, again, like the last one, it is not something that rolled with anything beneficial to really help my character. The last 220 for the barb has 7 to dexterity with 10% cold, lightning, and poison res, with fire having the most at 23. This is something that I could see someone using on a brand new endgame barbarian, especially when it comes to one that is wielding phase blades to be able to help with a little bit of a dexterity boost to be able to supplement what would be needed for phase blades now into vitality. Unfortunately, with the low dexterity roll and the low cold, lightning, and poison res, this is not something that I could potentially see myself using in the future. That's gonna be it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're able to see why you should save your imbue quests for an item like Diadems that has the potential to roll a 220. Now granted, I didn't find anything that was super GG in this video, and I don't plan on using any of them on my characters in the future. However, it is possible to be able to actually get a 220 with amazing mods additionally to roll, and hopefully for any of you guys, if you try it out for yourselves with some imbue quests to spare on any of your characters, I hope that you guys will be able to get an amazing 220 for yourself. And if you do, let me know in the comments what you're able to roll. If you like this kind of content and want to see more, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever a new video comes out. And if you like this video, let me know by leaving a like. For any of you guys that are interested in more Diablo 2 Resurrected content from me, go ahead and click the card in the corner up above to see my playlist. I just transferred over from Pluggy, but I already have quite a few videos made for Diablo 2 Resurrected, and there's a lot more coming in the very near future that I hope you will enjoy as well. Other than that, hope you guys are all staying safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.